My name is Badri and I'm going to be presenting my final project for parametric design. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a very brief summary on how I used Grasshopper to parametrically model the Muqarnas of Fatma al-Ma'suma Mosque. So this is the Fatma al-Ma'suma Mosque. I'm going to be recreating this but in a very, very simple way because my focus is on the Muqarnas, which is this. So as you can see, the geometry is very complex, so I slowly built my way up to it using three different versions of Muqarnas and increasing levels of complexity. So the layout of this video will be first, I'm going to be showing you the three versions of the Muqarnas that I made. And then for the mosque itself, um, I made a definition for the arches uh, that are bordering the courtyard, and I also made a definition for a generative entrance. So for the first Muqarnas, I used profile curves to create surfaces. So I started with a radial grid, and for the sake of this explanation, I'm just going to be isolating one of these rows. So first I exploded uh, these cells into their vertices and their lines. And then I used uh, the evaluate battery to get the midpoints of each of these lines, so I can create a diamond panel in the middle. So then I exploded, I mean I projected these points onto a sphere. And then I use lines to connect uh, these four points to make a diamond shape. And then I took the end points of uh, these lines and I also took some points uh, on the lines using evaluate curve. And I moved them up in the Z direction so I can create basically a profile curve. So these are some more of the points that are moved up. And then I interpolated a curve through the points, and I made the surface. So if I were to apply this to the rest of the cells, this is the result. So now I need to create um, surfaces that go through the corners of all these cells. So going back to my singular isolated row, these are my points, so now I need to just create lines through the rest of the points. And do the same thing, I evaluate some of the lines. And then I interpolate a curve through them. And I create a surface. So combining them with the surface in the middle. This is my end result. And as you can see, I culled uh, this portion here and I just used it as a dome opening. So this is what I use for the opening. And then just to add a level of visual complexity, I also used a grid structure. So if I were to pipe and render this geometry, this is the result. And here you can see the top view and a close-up of uh, the details. And then this is um, what it would look like if we just applied the surfaces. And this is highly customizable depending on where you evaluated the curve, how you moved it up, it all depends on um, the profile curves. This is a close-up, and this is the interior. So as you can see, we do have some semblance of a Muqarnas, but it's nowhere near the Muqarnas of Fatma al-Ma'suma Mosque. In fact, it looks more like this Muqarnas, even though it's not really um, accurate, but uh, we can see some of the concave surfaces. I realized maybe my next step should be looking at the skeleton or the exterior of the Muqarnas itself. So for example, looking at uh, this Muqarnas, you can see that the top is a dome and that's what I've been using, but here it seems to have different or varying degrees of flatness. So there seems to be a 2D shelf here and then a 3D curve here, and then a 2D shelf and then a 3D curve. 
and so on. So I'm going to try to create a step dome. So for the second version of the Muqarnas, I decided to create a definition for a step dome in which I could input any 2D pattern. So I used one of the presets from the Parakeet plugin and it's called uh, Star Pattern 3, but you can use uh, most of these patterns and they would work. So this is Star Pattern 3, but because I have both flat surfaces and curved surfaces, I need a 2D and a 3D version of this pattern. So this is the 2D version. And then this is the 3D version. So for the dome, I started with a polar grid, which I projected upwards onto a sphere. And now I'm going to use these rows to create my flat shelves and my curved surfaces. So I basically took every other row and moved it down in the Z direction and I created pairs. So it looks like this, so I can use this shelf for my 2D pattern and then this curve for my 3D pattern. So using Morph 2D, I input the star pattern on the 2D part and using Morph 3D, I input it on the 3D part. And this is the end result. And so if I were to take this one step further, I would create 3D units of uh, the geometry of Muqarnas and hang it from uh, these shelves and these surfaces. So this is the final result of Muqarnas 2. So at this point, I started to realize my mistake. The reason why I chose this Muqarnas is because it looks organic. It looks more like um, a beehive or maybe stalactites hanging from uh, the inside of a cave. So what makes it look organic is because it's not arranged on a radial or a polar grid. It seems almost accidental and as if these lines are being dragged down by gravity. So I had to adjust my logic and instead of creating something uniform, I'm going to create something that's going to respond to my manual manipulation of it. So I'm going to create a definition where I can use a certain pattern and then place manually place curve attractors and then the pattern will be dragged down based on where I manually input those curve attractors. In this way, my manipulation is going to be imperfect and imperfectly placed, so it's going to look more accidental and organic rather than a perfect geometric system. So for the third version of the Muqarnas, I'm just going to be modeling one corner. For example, this one. Okay, so for Muqarnas 3, this is my corner. And I chose one of uh, these four corners to move up in the Z direction, and this is going to be the highest point of the Muqarnas. Then I divided this corner into different points. So this is the part where I'm going to input one of my curves and this is going to be used to drag down parts of the pattern. And for the pattern, I'm going to be using the same pattern I used for the previous Muqarnas, which is the 2D and 3D versions of Star Pattern 3. So I'm going to start with what I did with the 2D pattern, which is I input it into the lower bound. This is how. So first I input this curve into a curve closest point battery along with uh, these points. So now I measured the distance between each point on this grid and the points on the line. I sorted them into their highest and lowest values and then I remapped these values because I'm going to be using these distances as the distances in which the pattern will be pulled down. So this is what it looks like so far. And now I'm just going to use the Morph 2D to input the pattern onto these points. So this is the pattern. It looks very imperfect because this line was placed manually, so it's not exactly on the points. So for the lower bound, I skipped ahead. I'm, I'm going to go back now to the upper bound. Um, so basically, I input two more curves to distort the upper bound. And I'll show you how the upper bound is distorted. So again, I used curve closest point on these two curves.
and the u the uniformity of the pattern itself can change based on these values or the graph mapper and it changes based on where I input uh, the second set of curves so for example if I were to move these around the distortions would follow the curve and then I use the distance between uh, the points and the curves to create vectors of movement for um, how it acts towards this highest point so as you can see it's looking very organic as if it's alive okay so as I said before there is a lower and an upper bound now I'm going to show you where the upper bound is and how I basically use the morph 3d pattern uh, to input the 3d version of the star pattern 3 and I stretched it between the upper and lower bounds so basically as you can see here this is the lower bound and it's controlled by the first curve we input and this is the upper bound So if I were to input the Morph 3D, this is how it would look. This is very dramatic, so I'm just going to adjust it. So as you can see, if we take the top view, we can see the star pattern 3, but it's being distorted by, again, this curve. So if I were to move it around, for example, you can see that the, I'm going to call it the line of gravity, follows it. So th just to summarize, this is the 2D version of Muqarnas 3 and how it's being dragged down at these points that are highlighted in red. And this is the 3D version. And that's as far as I got for the Muqarnas. As for the mosque, I basically took the floor plan and I created these arches, but I created them in a way that basically the definition can be applied to any floor plan and the arches will be perfectly uniform. Okay, so for the simplified mosque, I basically just traced the outside perimeter of the mosque and the inner perimeter of the courtyard and I created basic massing. Uh, but then I took these two courtyards, which will be surrounded by arches, and I uh, created a definition that would be smart enough to take out any of the lines that are too small or smaller than the span of the arch, whatever I choose. So for example, these are probably too small, so it's going to take them out because um, it's going to know that uh, these lengths are smaller than the arch length. And also because the line is going to be divided based on whatever arch length I specify, I wanted it to take the remainder of that division to divide it by two and to throw each half of the remainder on the ends of the lines. So my arches will be centered in the middle and also the remainder will be called out so there's no weird arches at the ends. So if I can perfect this, it can be applied to any floor plan on any mosque and it would create perfect colonnades. Th these are the divisions I got. So again, as you can see, uh, this line is called, and apparently this line fits an arch. So now I can create the colonnades. The first part is, of course, the arches. I took the endpoints of these and I used them to create lines. And then I took the midpoint and I used and I moved it up, then I interpolated a curve here. And as for the columns, I extended um, these points and then I offset them. And then I lofted it to make a box and I extruded it. And then the entablature on the top is again another offset and a loft and then it's moved up and extruded. 
So when I rendered the result, you can very clearly see how the definition just automatically takes out weird corners and optimizes it to create perfect arches. Okay, so the last part of my presentation is going to be about the generative entrance. So basically, just following the idea of how this definition can be applied to any floor plan, um, I'm just going to be taking uh, these inner perimeters again, and I'm going to be creating a definition that can push my automatically made arches out of the way to create room for whatever I want to make as an entrance. Okay, so basically, if this is my mosque, this is the border for my entrance and this is the path I want to clear a way for. So I just found the intersections between the curves. I also created an offset to determine the size of my entrance. So basically I continued here, I culled uh, some parts, and finally I made the arch in the same way that I made it for the previous definition. And I can change the size of the door opening. And I can also move this around and the definition will respond. So now we've covered the three different versions of Muqarnas that I made, along with uh, generative and responsive design for the arches bordering the courtyard and the entrance. Thank you.